All right, guys, welcome back to the Progressive Rehab and Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Rory Alter, head clinical coach here at Progressive Rehab and Strength with my lovely co-host back here on the podcast, Dr. Alyssa Havison. And in this 10-minute tip episode, we are talking about ways to train with one leg. And the reason we're talking about this is because as physical therapists and as strength coaches, powerlifting, barbell coaches, etc., we work with people who have had injuries or surgeries that they are either non-weight bearing or unable to evenly train um, their lower body or upper body lifts with the involvement of one or both legs. So uh, oftentimes, and Alyssa, I think, you know, we deal with a lot of clients who ha- might have this mindset that when you injure one area of your body, that's it. You have to wait until it's healed before you can train. So we might have someone who has, let's say, I think a lot of the times we get people who have ACL reconstructions and um, quad or Achilles tendon repairs or a rotator cuff surgery or a hand surgery or elbow surgery. I mean, obviously, I guess that's basically the whole lower limb. I mean, the whole body. <laughs> it's been like a it's been a week um even hip surgeries um you know whether it's a labrum repair a tear fii surgery etc so and if any surgery to any part of your limb or any injury such as skin injuries you know we see a lot of skin injuries with um hands um in barbell training there might be a period of time where you cannot involve one or more limbs in your training. So in this episode, we're going to talk about quickly ways that you can modify your training for a lower extremity injury to keep training your other limb or some area of involvement of both limbs and your both lower limbs and your um, upper body. So I've got to get, I don't know, I feel like we should stop using the timer because we always go too far beyond 10 minutes but I guess if we didn't use a timer we'd take way way more than an hour I know right (laughs) these would just be hour episodes all right so for those of you who are watching on YouTube I've got our 10 minute timer here and I'm gonna go hit start so Alyssa let's say someone has an Achilles tendon repair uh uh, quad or quad repair ACL reconstruction or hip surgery where they or a fracture or something in their in their leg where they cannot bear weight or they cannot bend their knee or hip to so non-weight bearing and can't bend the knee or the hip how might we continue to train the s- squat movement um, or the deadlift movement Yeah. So I think this is a really good question, especially when we're considering somebody who really cannot bear weight on that leg, because when we're, when we're talking about a single leg exercise, there's different levels of, of concern we might Mm -hmm. have. Do we want to be in a position where we could lose balance and have to Mm -hmm. put that leg down that those are things that we have to consider and have to be careful of. We might not Mm -hmm. be able to just go directly to something where you Mm -hmm. are balancing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in this scenario, especially if we're talking about sort of a squat movement, mm-hmm. I would say a single leg leg press is a really safe place to start. Mm-hmm. Especially early on in the rehab process, when we are non-weight bearing, you can still use that other leg. You can move through a, a decent range of motion, mm-hmm. not risking losing balance right. standing on the other side. Um, you know, and then if you are able to balance, <laughs> that's when we, we want to have something next, next to the person, mm-hmm. right? We're not going to want to just be in space hoping mm-hmm. that, we, <laughs> that, that we're going to be able to catch ourselves. Uh, yeah, so I think for the balancing aspect, you know, if we can do something in standing weight bearing on the other leg, um, we, I think we have to consider, does the knee bend? Can the knee bend? Because if we can't bend it, so it was like a quad repair or an ACL reconstruction and we're, um, trying to do like a Bulgarian split squat, the leg, where are you going to put that leg if you can't bend it, you know? 
Um, so it'll be challenging to, I mean, could you put it up on like a bench in front of you possibly, but we have to consider um, hamstring length and all that kind of stuff, which might be irritated or not available when you're in a brace. So for when we can't bend the knee, absolutely, I say leg press. But if we're able to bend the knee, um, then we can put the foot up on something behind us and we can do a Bulgarian split squat. Um, and I think that would be really good. But again, always having something to balance on. Um, before we move on, just something to consider is that when you can't bear weight on a leg, you can't carry weights. You can't carry plates to load a bar um, or to load a plate loaded machine. So we might, we're going to be thinking more dumbbells. Um, and if you're going with that leg press, you're going to either want, if it, if your gym only has a plate loaded machine, you're going to need a training partner or just ask someone to load the plates for you. Um, but I would default to a pin loaded machine for the leg press instead of a plate loaded, because if you're alone and you can't walk around with both legs and hold the plate with two hands, um, you just want to consider safety. Um, more than anything else because if you fall and you are newly post-surgical that you know one of the biggest things post-surgical in those first couple of weeks is really protecting the site so anything else regarding the squat for lower limb you know i would the other thing i would say is if somebody is able to and it really depends on strength level you know we could use a trx we could mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. like uh squat or partial squat but again mm -hmm. we have to consider their fitness level and mm -hmm. and level of strength prior to this happening because i wouldn't necessarily send somebody right in to right. do that um but yeah and if somebody can't bend the knee or isn't able to safely stand or balance and we are doing a leg press you know though we don't don't typically default to muscle isolation, isolation. exercises yeah. This is a situation where somebody could get some more work in by doing like a leg extension or, or a leg yeah. curl on yeah. one side. Yeah. So though that is really not our first choice, it it's better than not adding more things, you know, if we right. wanted to add. Yep. Absolutely. Now for the deadlift when you can't bend the knee. Um, well, let's just talk about the deadlift when you can bend the knee. Because um, I think that most people like won't deadlift early on, but don't realize that there's not really that much range of motion involved in it and if you're not walking and you well this is non-weight bearing so no, sorry non-weight bearing um <laughs> just kidding we're not going to deadlift so what would you I, I would default to a single leg bridge with the with the surgical side supported on something like a stability ball or a bench or whatever so can you think of anything else aside from isolation exercises that you might um default to for the deadlift when you can yeah so either. a single leg bridge is great and obviously if you're on the ground you're not at risk of you know, losing balance or falling you know from there if somebody is able i would say a single leg rdl mm -hmm. um, with the other leg potentially adding weight with the dumbbell especially in this scenario where they're non-weight bearing i would have them next to something where they mm -hmm. and they can hold on it doesn't you know they yeah. don't necessarily have to balance 100% of the time right. if they're able to do it while holding on to a bar or something next to mm -hmm. them so that they can do it safely with their other leg then that's a good option definitely um so let's talk about um deadlifting so I think deadlifting is one of the first exercise lower body exercises that I'll add in um even if someone is weight bearing but they can't bend their knee, you know, we can deadlift, we can do an RDL, we can do a stiff legged deadlift, we can do um, a rack pull. Um, if they have a little bit of range of motion available in their knee, um, usually they do, you know, usually when you come to physical therapy, uh, you'll, you know, in, in the absence of needing to keep that knee extremely straight for whatever reason, um, we can usually bend the knee a little bit in the beginning so we can start to deadlift. Um, so I think that people don't realize that you can, and you can also do things like good mornings and whatnot if you are weight bearing. So I think adding those straighter leg weight bearing exercises for the posterior chain 
sooner rather than later are something that you can definitely do to keep training especially if it's like below the hip so if it's knee and the foot adding that in like as soon as you feel comfortable is great for the hip um and of course, these are going to be at much lighter weights. And, and we'll usually do something in, in the range of like 10, 10, 10 to 12 reps because it's so light. Um, and this is very early on post-surgery. Um, so I think that people tend to think of things in absolutes. Like if they can't deadlift from the floor, right. floor, they think they can't deadlift. And, that's, and it's not that they, it, it's sort of just not thinking outside of the box, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. if you can't do that, well, you could do a rack above your knee and if it's better than nothing you're doing something you're working yeah. towards something that's that and you're keeping the muscle on muscles on the um surgical side that didn't have surgery and weren't involved like the hip and the you know the foot or whatever um you're you're still providing them a stimulus which is good and by training the other leg the non-surgical leg there's crossover to the surgical leg as well so it's so important to keep training the opposite side during the recovery process um now we're gonna run out of time we should have done like a 10 minute tip for like lower body and upper body but uh Let's say some someone is in the same situation where they've had surgery to or or an a injury that pr- really prevents them from like using their leg a- enough to squat and deadlift. Um, what do we do with upper body training? Uh, you know, I think people think, well, I can't. I, I've had surgery on my leg, so I can't stand and do an overhead press, or I can't bench press. So, like, basically, I'm just going to either do isolation exercises until I'm out of the brace or out, out of physical therapy, or I'm going to just not train. But training no, can you train your upper body. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, even if you need to do it seated, if it's a seated overhead press or or an incline press, depending on what mm-hmm. position someone's able to be in, mm-hmm. uh, you know bench press, we might need to change the position of the lower body, whether we are elevating the feet or straightening the legs. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, again, we run into the issue of loading plates. So yep. bring a friend to the gym. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> or otherwise there are dumbbells that we still have to walk them over. So if somebody yep. is like really non-weight bearing and on crutches, that's where Worst case scenario, a pin loaded upper body yes, machine. Exactly. It's not our favorite, but it's better than you doing nothing in the exactly. time that you're recovering and it'll make it easier for you to return to plate loaded exercises. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, the other thing that I was thinking for upper body is like pull ups and chin ups. Um, and the big thing that we have to consider is, you know, getting. Up oh, there goes our timer. But honestly, we're really almost finished here. Um, the big thing to consider is that, you know, usually when you do pull-ups and chin-ups, you're fl- floating above the ground. <laughs> you have to climb on something to get on to get up to the chin-up or pull-up bar. And then most people jump down, you know. So when we're in a situation where we've only got one leg and the other side has been operated on and we really are protecting that, um, this would be a scenario where I would say let's do lat pull-downs. Um, and adjust our grip and we could do seated rows or we can even do inverted rows um, as a good body weight substitute for chin-ups and pull-ups in the interim so you can do like a seated um, you can set it like this is the only time I would say use this Smith machine (laughs) you know if like other people are using the rack um, and you don't have to carry the bar anywhere so the bar's just there it slides up and down really easily so just adjust the bar in the Smith machine so that you can do it do like pull-ups from a seated position um, pull-ups or chin-ups from a seated position or you can also do inverted rows where you're supporting the surgical leg on your opposite leg so that you know you're not utilizing it in a way that you shouldn't be using it during that time so yeah in most scenarios we always say that really all you need is a, a bar a rack a bench uh-huh. and some weights. these are the types of scenarios where it's beneficial to have access to like a public commercial gym where you have this equipment that you don't need all the time but it enables like if you can't use a leg, if you can't use a hand, mm-hmm. it, it gives you a lot more availability in terms of what you can do. With yeah, the and, and I, I think, and Alyssa, I'm sure you've experienced this with some of your clients. You know, a lot of us go to, like, 
powerlifting specific gyms where they don't have pin or plate loaded machines or we have home gyms where we just literally have the rack and the, and the barbells and plates. Um, but I have definitely had people for the time being while they're in this first like eight weeks of post-operative or post-injury recovery join a commercial gym to have access to more equipment so that they can continue to train in the capacity that is right for them. Um, so no, that's definitely a great point. Um, and one thing, you know, one thing that you guys can check out is we have an article. It's, I think it's like 56 ways to continue training when you're like, if you can't do, I don't know, I forget 56 alternatives to barbell lifts if you're injured or something like that. I can't remember the name of the article, but I'll link it in the show notes because if you can't squat, we've got a hundred options. Well, we have 56 options <laughs> in this article for the squat, bench, press, and deadlift. So um, we'll link that in the show notes. So if you need ideas to help you, whether you're an athlete, coach, or clinician, if you need ideas to help you come up with alternative exercises for continuing to train with one leg, then um, that article is available for you. Um, you can jump into our free Facebook group, The Secret Society of Barbell Mastery. And if you've got questions on specific things that you need help with, about this topic you can certainly ask us in there and we can make recommendations we also do free form checks um, so if you're struggling to come up with an idea um, you can or you're struggling to execute something that you think would work you can always post a video or a picture in there and we can provide insight for that as well so with that all said thank you Alyssa I think we did pretty good on this 10 minute tip because yeah. we only went a little over <laughs> And we were, we were like on the last bit of the topic when the timer went off. So I feel like we did okay. Um, and we will be back for more things related to the foot and ankle um, in this month's podcast series. All right, guys, that's it for now. And see you next time.